Today was a windy day here in Colorado. My anemometer was reading a constant 20 mile per hour wind. Usually I don't see much over 12. I thought it would be a good day to do some windmill experiments. Last week I experimented with cutting windmill blades out of PVC pipe. This blade is one that I made out of a 3 inch pipe. Uh, the blade itself is a foot long and it's got a 4 inch uh, area for attaching it to the hub. I also wanted to test out this alternator that was on the wind turbine in the previous YouTube video that I made. This is a three phase alternator. Uh, each phase contains three coils and each coil is 175 turns of number 31 wire. As you can see from these pictures, my alternator has a huge air gap. That's because uh, when I did the fiberglassing, I didn't clamp it down and it warped as it hardened. Uh, this alternator would work a lot better if I didn't have to have such a big space between the magnets and the coils, but there's nothing I can do about it. So this is what I kludged together today. I have an 11 inch hub with uh, three 12 inch blades. Total swept area is 867 square inches or 0.56 square meters. I usually like to calculate the amount of power I'm dealing with before I go out there and do the experiment, uh, just so I'm prepared. Using these equations, I found that the power going through the windmill will be about 207 watts. If I assume that my windmill is about 30% efficient, I can expect about 67 watts of electricity. So the first test I did today was I wanted to make sure that I could stay in control of the windmill. I shorted out two of the phases of my alternator just to see that uh, the windmill would spin slowly and this is the result. It's spinning fairly slowly and I was pretty satisfied with that. Uh, those blades aren't going to hurt anyone. When I unshorted the alternator, things got a little more exciting. Uh, the windmill started to spin at between 15 and 20 revolutions per second. That's like 1200 RPM. And um, my alternator was putting out up to 100 volts on each phase. I only got a few power measurements in. At one point I saw 30 watts at my load, but I probably hadn't hit the peak power load yet. Then I had a failure. All of a sudden my three-bladed windmill was a one-bladed windmill. Um, I'm guessing, I didn't see it happen, but I'm guessing that it threw one blade and then vibration killed the second blade. Both blades were very consistent in where they broke. They broke at the point where my blade width goes down to about half an inch. Uh, looking at this now, I'm thinking I didn't need to really go down that narrow. I could have uh, made that much wider going back to the base. I found one of the blades about 30 feet away and I never found the second one. It must have gone quite a distance. So, conclusions I came to after today's testing were 1. My alternator isn't all that bad even with the huge air gap. It could produce some power. Uh, Two, if you're going to use PVC blades, you should really have a furling system or some intelligent electronic control to make sure it doesn't overspin itself. And three, if you're testing a new windmill, never stand next to it. That's it for today. Bye.